Hi everyone and welcome to day two of the Pro Web Design course. Today we're talking about design and we are also covering the basics in the same way that we did yesterday with business and sales and branding. So I'm going to start with the absolute essential knowledge all about web design. We're going to be asking fundamentally what is web design because I think a lot of people out there are doing web design without really knowing what they're doing. And I guess the the real question is, you know, what does success mean? If you know what you're doing, then you know what you need to do in order to succeed. A lot of people are doing websites and web designs that just fail. And I think the reason for that is because they don't really know what web design is. So today I'm going to try and answer that question. So we start with asking, what is design? Well, for me, design at its highest level is the creation of a new solution to a problem. The creation of a new solution to a problem. So it's effectively, it's the creative process, but it's a creative process that produces something. Now, the thing that's produced could be almost anything. You could create a menu. You could create um, any kind of experience. So, you know, designing a bar is designing a script for a call center is design. You could design a widget that goes into a machine. That's also creative. You need to look at the problem, see the shape of the problem, work out what's needed, and then come up with something that solves the problem. Now, not every part of every solution that is created in a design process must necessarily be unique. It could just be a case of looking around to see what else might solve the problem. So if your problem is that your machine needs a, a particular kind of property or function, then you could look around and find a component that does that function. And then you bring that component and include it in part of your machine. And that is still design. In fact, it's a very good design because it's a silly engineer that redesigns the wheel, that you know, reinvents the wheel to create a new widget when there's already a widget that's freely available or you know cheap to buy that will do the job. Why waste your time creating something brand new that does um, the same job as something that already exists? Now, in graphic design this whole area that we're in, we call these things conventions. If you pick up a newspaper, you look at it, you know how to read that newspaper. You know which is the front cover. Why do you know which is the front cover? Because it's a convention. Because the page is open that way and there's a branding at the top and there's headlines and you, you can tell the front cover from the back cover. If you pick up a, a newspaper from a completely different market, uh, from a completely different country, it might be in Arabic or Japanese or something, you will still be able to understand, yes, that's the headline. That is a lead story. That is describing what the story is about, even if you can't even understand the language at all. And conventions are really, really important. We're going to be talking a lot more about them. Basically, what conventions are, are shortcuts to achieving something. Um, so, basically, when the first person created the first newsletter or newspaper, they thought, well, this is important, I'm going to put this text in big and make it bold and put it at the top and then people will notice it first. Now, the first person who ever did that was creating something brand new, but everybody since who's written a headline and set a headline for a newspaper has followed the same convention. Why do they follow that convention? Because it works. Firstly, it does its job, it gets the thing noticed, it stands out as the first thing that's most important. But secondly, the convention works because people are used to it. So when you look at a newspaper, because you're familiar with the style of newspapers, with the conventions that newspapers use, you understand that that's a headline because you've seen headlines before. And that's really, really useful because it means you don't have to think. And not thinking is very, very important. In web design, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of conventions. You'll be familiar with many of them, even if you don't think about them very much. And that's really the whole point. You don't really have to think about conventions. So if design is the creation of a new solution to a problem, what is web design? 
Well, obviously, it's designed within the context of the web-based medium. Okay, all web design is to do with communication. All graphic design is to do with communication. There's a difference between design and art, by the way. Art is designed to be enjoyed for itself, to be appreciated in its own right. Design has another purpose, which is generally communication. So on the web, web design is the creation of a communication solution that is going to be accessed through a web browser, generally. And one other difference between web design and, say, a newspaper design or a book cover design is that communication can go two ways. And it's, this is becoming more and more important. You actually want people to interact with your website, even if it isn't a web-based application, like you know, PayPal or eBay or Hotmail. Um, you still want people to interact with your website. And in fact, just following links is interacting with a website. When you give somebody a web page, you're giving them part of a conversation. And the links that you offer them next are a way for them to say, this is the way I want the conversation to go. It's a way for them to tell you, even though you're not there, how, you want, how they want the conversation to work. What do they want to know about next? So, fundamentally, the better we communicate, the better our web pages communicate, the better the job we have done at design. And that's really the, the fundamental design lesson of today. So I'm just going to go through some of the absolute core factors that influence good web design, that are really, really important in web design. Now, I hope that everybody has read Save the Pixel 2nd Edition. If you haven't read Save the Pixel 2nd Edition, please email me and I'll make sure you get a copy. Because all of this stuff is covered in a lot of detail in Save the Pixel. So on this course, I'm not, I'm not going to try and repeat stuff that I've already written elsewhere. I'll send you to articles, I'll share resources with you, books, MP3 files, videos, anything I can find that, that communicates the message. Why? Because part of being a designer is using your creative energy, where it, applying it where it's most needed. So I'm not going to spend time reinventing something that I've already done. I would much rather spend that time and that creative energy speaking with you guys in person, answering your questions, posting on the forum, all those kinds of things. All new solutions to problems that may crop up. Okay, number one. I think the most fundamental thing about design, graphic design, web design, is attention. If you imagine when somebody arrives at your web page, imagine that they've got a, a, an hourglass, you know, the things that, that the sand runs through. So they've got a, a, a timer running there, and they've only got a little bit of attention. Some people say you've got to get their attention in the first three seconds or seven seconds, or they'll go away. Um, I don't know if that's true, but what I do know is there's a finite amount of attention available. Somebody clicks a link from another site or from the search en engine results and they land on your web page and they've got a certain amount of attention. Now what you've got to do is you've got to use that attention, that budget of attention that you have, you've got to use that attention and guide it to something else that's going to give you more attention. It's kind of like gambling. You sit down at the poker table and you've got a certain number of chips and you need to gamble those chips in order to get more chips. That's the point of the game. In web design, we're doing a very similar thing, but we're doing it with attention. Now, if you put up a web page that's got a thousand different things to look at, what's going to happen to the attention? What are the things that are going to give you more attention? The things that are going to catch attention and generate more attention and excitement, are they going to be seen if you've got a thousand things on the screen? I can show you examples of that. I don't have one right now, but we'll be looking at them later. So you've got to, you've got to let people focus on something. Every page should have a focal point. When you pick up a newspaper, it's got a focal point. And that front page has got a headline, it's got an image. It's got something that draws your eye, first and foremost. So every page should have a focal point. And that focal point should be something that is going to generate more attention for you. It's got to be interesting. It's got to be appealing. It's got to make a promise. And adding all of these ideas together in Save the Pixel, I, I use this concept called gettability. Just fundamentally, before your attention runs out when you get to a page, do you get it? Do you get what the page is about? So if you go to a web page, you're looking for something in particular. 
you might be looking to entertain yourself, some particular information, um, or you might be looking to create a fun uh, carry out some kind of function, doesn't matter. You're looking for something. What you need to do is you need to get that that page is the right place for you to be. Everyone's got this question in their mind, am I in the right place? And then when they follow links and go deeper into the site, the question is, am I still in the right place? And fundamentally, there's only one thing that you really have to do when it all boils down. And you've got to get this visitor to your website to think, I'm going to be more likely to achieve what I want by going forward and continuing to interact with this website than I am by going back or going elsewhere, trying another search. As long as you can tip the balance that they are confident that they're going to find what they want on this website, you're going to keep their attention. Imagine that there's a finite amount of attention, which we've already said, and every web page has got a certain amount of stuff on it. Well, the success of that web page at generating attention is a function of the amount of attention that you start with divided by the amount of stuff. So like we're saying, if you've got a web page, it's got hundreds of thousands of things on it to look at, that attention is going to be divided and spread across hundreds of thousands of things. So there's almost no attention. The eye is going to be skipping around and it's going to be very unlikely for that visitor to find the thing that is their next step forward, that thing that confirms that they're going to find what they're looking for which is why simplicity is absolutely fundamental and it's what the whole of Save the Pixel is about, the art of simple web design. If you can cut anything out of your web, web page, your web design, that's not needed, anything that doesn't help somebody find what they're looking for, whatever you can cut out, it's going to help your designs. And that, guys, is my hopefully about five minutes introduction to what web design is all about.